Leaving Tenton Abbey behind, my route continues along the valley. And very nice it is. But I'm not sure it quite lives up to his description in my 50s guidebooks. It is a road which passes now over green pastures, now beside the wide flowing river, now on a ledge commanding long views across the valley to the hills on the farther bank. Problem is, from my Austin Cambridge, long commanding views are in short supply. Very nice aspects of rock faces and forest. But as yet, I haven't really seen any spectacular vistas. Pretty as it is, much of the road is flanked by dense trees that must have grown up over the last half century. Still, despite the lack of panoramas, it's an undeniably beautiful route. Ah, it's a pretty little village. Brown's General Store. <laughs> Brown's in Llandogo has stood on this road for 80 years, and present owners, Roger and Ruth Brown, have fond memories of village life here in the 1950s. What was a village like then? Very different from what we've got today. Much quieter. I remember Ruth stayed with when she was at school here. Um, she stayed with a school friend, and you, you right. were playing tennis on the road. On the you? road, yes. It yes. was so quiet. I've got a lovely photograph I'll show you of Mr. Joins going to serve some petrol to a police motorbike, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> he would literally put his cigarette on to the pump, <laughs> and it was a hand <laughs> pump, and it was literally on the side. Dear, dear, dear. We could have been <laughs> blown to high heaven. What's the big difference in what you sell now? Well, strangely enough, we're going back to the way we were in after the war. We've got local farms producing sausages and yes, bacon. Course, the... We sell a lot of local. We get a lot of fruit. We've had strawberries in today, asparagus in today. Right. Um, it's all local. All local, all yes. All local. Yes. And it's what people want. Mm. And it is returning to that, because in, at that time, the local farm produced the butter, the milk, cream, eggs. The farmer used to come around. Like we were talking the other night. Mr Morgan used to come around with the milk, delivering milk, and he'd literally have eggs in his pocket. If your <laughs> mother wanted to make, oh, I've got a couple in there. <laughs> it, but it was, it was very... It was wonderful looking back. So where do they shop now? Uh, mostly Tesco's. Tesco <laughs> online. <laughs> online, of course. Yes, yes. they do, yes. yeah. 159 please. Would you like a bag for it? Okay. When you look back to the old days, do you, do you regret that they've changed? In some ways, yes. I would say, no, everyone's better off. Yes. Absolutely, yes. There was poverty. Yes. It was, life was quite it, hard, it was hard in the old days. Yeah. Uh, it was very hard. Yeah. Um, people, people don't appreciate the standard of living they've got today. Leaving Brown's family store behind, my route continues to wind its way alongside the Welsh bank of the River Wye before crossing over this natural border and back into England. And the next part of my journey, if I'm to believe my old guidebooks, will plunge me into an ancient and curious world. Even now, as we drive along the minor roads, we shall be slowed down by pigs and sheep and chickens wandering off the unfenced forest land. If we leave our car, we shall meet people whose outlook on life is not so very different from that of their distant ancestors. It's extraordinary the way uh, the sheep here <laughs> just sit very close, very close to the edge of the road. I'm not quite sure what the attraction is for them, but they're very... <laughs> this one's absolutely asleep, right on the white line on the verge of the road. I wonder if they get some comfort from cars going by. I wouldn't have thought so. But they're just right on the verge. 
The medieval royal forest of Dean comprises 27,000 acres of woodland sandwiched between the rivers Wye and Severn. Its relative isolation has fostered a very distinct cultural identity, and the freely roaming sheep are an ancient reminder of this. The men who own them have the intriguing title of sheep badgers. Probably remember these cars, Henry. And 50 years ago, many foresters, like Henry here, kept sheep in this way to supplement their incomes. Yes, I've had sheep on the forest 60 years. Let's put it like this, I worked at the pit, yeah. I looked after the sheep, I fished the severn, <laughs> and I never took my trousers off for a week. <laughs> because you were working so hard. Yeah. As locals born and bred, Henry and his good mate Mick have the right to graze their sheep anywhere in the forest. Ooh, you're greedy. <laughs> Look at it. So what's the actual uh, meaning of the word badger, sheep badger? Right, well, well to, to badger or to badge means to agitate or to keep on the move. The right to keep sheep in the forest was granted by a charter in the year 1217. Yeah. Right, and that, that was given and called the Charter of the Forest. We we're born with the right, and no <laughs> doubt we'll die with it. And is anyone questioning the right? Oh, it's, uh, I mean, anybody and everybody. The Forest of Dean is, is, is a very unique <laughs> place to be. Right, it's different from anywhere else in the country. It's a beautiful place to live, and in some places, you see, there are not very many sheep. So people come along, they buy a little property, and they knock down the garden walls and knock down the fences so, you know, they can drive their motors or big cars in and park wherever they want to. Along comes a sheep to graze, and they say, oh, dirty sheep grazing on my garden, I yeah. don't want it. Right. Well, I mean, what will you say is this? Our, the, the sheep have been in the forest since the 1200s. Well, mm -hmm. oh, then, if you want to come and join us, Welcome. <laughs> if you don't like what we're doing, don't bother to come. <laughs> it's as simple as that, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So you've been a, uh, around sheep a long time. What do you think of sheep? Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. And they're nice animals. Yeah. Uh, some, like... some people call them a bit stupid. Yeah, don't worry about them being stupid. I know they're bridge butter. <laughs> don't worry. And people say they're stupid. That's not a bunk come as far as we're concerned. <laughs> Back in the 50s was, I, I mean, it was a wonderful time compared with today. When you when you think about what what did we have in the 50s? We had railways, engineering works, we had the pits open. You didn't get the drug problems in the 50s. You didn't get the problems with road rage and things like that, and 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 uh, young people fighting and injuring others. Like it wasn't a, it was a different type of life, wasn't it? The only thing that we got left from the 50s, see, is the countryside. We've still got the Forest of Dean. Yeah. But what we've got to be careful that we don't let the, the modern day thing take away these things like these sheep grazing. Anybody want to come and live in the Forest of Dean? Welcome. Come and yeah. live with us. But don't try to alter us, please. <laughs> 50 years ago, keeping sheep like this would have been, more often than not, a sideline. Most men made their livings down in the huge coal mines that dominated this community. But now there's no trace of any such industry. Due to falling demand, the pits all closed down in the 60s. However, one man refuses to stop digging. 73-year-old Robin Morgan began mining in the forest when he was just a boy of 13. Hello, Robin. And like the sheep badgers, Robin also has an ancient birthright. He's a free miner, and as such, can open his own mine. At one time, there was uh, t about 10,000 of us underground every day in the Forest of Dean, like, you know, at, right. one, at one time. Now, there's only just four small mines left, and, uh, like, it's, uh, there's three men working at the one, one at the other, two, and then there's me here now. Now, I'm doing all this developing myself. So, uh, you were uh, 13 when you came down? 
Well, the first mine I ever went down, yes, I was 13 years of age. Yeah. Instead of going to school, my two brothers had their own mine, and uh, they used to drop me down a shaft 100 foot deep in a 40 gallon drum <laughs> with two hooks inside. That's the first mine I went down. Yeah. And then at 14 years of age, I was working down a mine 700 foot deep. Right. I was always bottom of the class. <laughs> Never really went to school. But I've enjoyed my life. What more do you want? That's, that's the main thing. The big pits, they closed in 65. And is that when you became a free miner? No, no, I was a free miner before that. Would you work in the big pits and then go and work in your own pit? Is yes, that sort of yeah. yes, we should do it <laughs> all. Sort of hobby. On weekends and in the evenings to try and get it going. We hadn't got any money. Yeah. And we, we were trying to get it going, like, you know, yeah. So you've been working long days. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in the 1960s, like, we were working there full, full time then, like, you know. Right. Yes, we've worked long days. In fact, sometimes we've worked out there all night. Yeah. You know, we've had a day's work and then worked out there all night, you know. But you were talking up top about uh, the, the satisfaction you still get from taking coal out of the ground. That is it's, right. It's interesting to know what that actually, what is it that, what is it that makes you think, ah, it's a good day, that's, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Is it the actual digging? The amount of coal you get out, the more you get out, uh, the course, the more pleased you are, the more money you're making, like, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, you put your wooden supports and all that up and look at it after and think, well, that's a tidy job, like, yeah, I can look, oh, you, you've actually You're still enjoying it, you can see I that. I'm still enjoying it, oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people call me a bloody fool, but, you know, and, and no doubt they are right. <laughs> well, it's your decision. But I'm enjoying myself, You do yeah. what you like. Now, I should keep going on as long as I can. Ah, very good.